What's up, YouTube? It's me, the Artisan MC, and today I'm going to give you my reaction to The Acolyte, Episode 5, Night. Well, it is early today when I'm watching this, and I can tell you from the jump after watching this episode, I am more tired, which I'm still not understanding why. Why did 28 minutes make me more tired than I was when I walked into this episode? Don't have an answer to that yet. I equally don't have an answer to what the hell was the point with the ending of this. Because this story doubles back on itself and does some ridiculous shit right off the bat. Now... This episode, you get the long-awaited fight between May's master, Smilo Ren. Shout out to Star Wars Theory for that, because that name will stick. And the rest of the Jedis that he, this thing has appeared in front of. Now, you get into this episode, and you get the fight. That's basically what you get. And you have Asha, Osha waking up and stumbling around to find she hears the sounds of lightsaber battles. Cool. Now, seeing this person move around with the red lightsaber and fighting these other Jedis is interesting. But these other Jedi, who I assume were masters, or at least knights, are going down pretty damn quick. They are. They they get did in some very interesting ways. One way, which I thought was pretty cool. It is what it is. I saw some stuff that I liked, liked in this. But <clears throat> beyond that point, Asha seeing this wants to, you know, kind of get away. And at a point, Yor tells her to run and run away from this this thing. Now, apparently, this thing is covered in some kind of metal wrist gauntlet and a helmet that shorts out lightsabers. Because, you know, lightsabers work on electricity. Is it Beskar? Don't know. Because Beskar doesn't short out lightsabers. It just repels it. Right? Too dense to cut. Um, I don't know what the, the metal was that they were using in the prequels when with the little ampy staffs and shit like that. But whatever it is, it shorts out lightsabers for a short amount of time. Now, what you can make of this creature is that it is fast. It is strong. It has man arms. And it is very skilled in in using the arts. Fine. Now, the part where OSHA is running away from this battle that takes place right where, you know, the movie, or not the movie, the show stopped last episode in front of Kalnaka's ship. She runs away from it. Okay, she's running away from it. Running away from it, she ends up running into Master Soul. He comes from in front of her to stop her. And my thinking is, what the hell is he doing way in front of him? This is way away from the battle. What are you doing way over here, coward? Because that's what it looks like. It looks like he had tried to run before her. I'm like, how the hell? Did he end up way over here when he was the first one that ran at this thing? That's not making any goddamn sense. Now, these other Jedi have fallen. They have went down. And Smilo has caught up to Osha and meets Master Soul and confronts him. They're going to have a fight, and then all of a sudden, behind 
behind Asha comes Yord in front of her, right? Not from behind Smilo. No, not where Smilo would have had to leave him to catch up to Osha. No, from behind her. The same direction you came from. I say, is everybody running in a circle? It doesn't make any goddamn sense. So, tell Jord to run off with Osha and take her to the ship, and they run off through the woods. And then Master Soul and Smilo have a duel. Now, for the most part, the duel is kind of cool. But you get little jabs of who this person might be might be right now during this this little time may was still in kalnaka's ship she finally gets herself out when she sees everybody else getting cut the hell down and when she breaks out she is set upon by jackie because jackie ain't letting her get away and her and jackie have a little fight now the part that I'm calling bullshit on is this is somebody who has taken out at least one Jedi master in combat. But apparently she's having a problem with this Padawan. This Padawan is getting the better of her and get to do some Jackie Chan. I got you in the cuffs, rolling, flipping, fighting stuff. I'm like, okay, what? The? She just this good now? So you bet you telling me that Jackie is better at fighting this person than Master Indara was? Ooh, that may carry him off. Look, weak as shit, don't it? Be that as it may, she gets OSHA. Cuffed. Yord and Asha are off running through the woods, away from a fight. Well, Smilo gives Master Soul to slip and comes to May's rescue, but not rescue. Smilo has come to kill Ray. Or excuse me, May. He's come to kill May. And because of this, he ends up into a fight with Jackie. Oh, joy. The Padawan versus this master. Who holds her own. Doesn't go down. Not like those other Jedi Knights that he was just cutting through. No, the Padawan. And I'm sitting there watching this shit thinking like, oh my God, well, I know why she's not dying because she's a female. The power of this girl is having a longer protracted fight than the Jedi Knights we saw. The grownups. No stupid moves, none of that. She she in there getting it. Now, I get it. It's Daphne Kane. It's X-23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the ah. ever, man? Who cares? What else she undone? I'm supposed to believe this Padawan was able to catch this assassin who took out a Jedi Master. She could take, th take that assassin out but now she's fighting that assassin's master and she can hang too now somewhere into the fight Jackie all of a sudden turned into Ahsoka why how you say get this when May was escaping Kalnaka's ship she picked up Kalnaka's lightsaber. You know, because it was just laying there on the ground after he got his, you know, chest opened up. 
And when she was rolling around and shit like that with Jackie and got cuffed face down to the pavement and got the cuffs on her, Jackie found that lightsaber, picked it up and put it on her hip too. So at a moment when she's getting overpowered, even though she's smaller and probably weaker than this bigger armed person who is bearing down on her with a red lightsaber, she pops the other blade out. So now she has two blades, one backhanded, one forehanded. And she starts going in on this master with both blades. A la Ahsoka. Oh, the joy. I guess I can't guess who wrote this part of the show. Now, in a bid to um, keep the story going, May gets away. She runs from her master. She gets the, she slips the cuffs over her her hands into the front, and she starts beating feet away from the fight into the forest. Now, at this time, Master Soul is looking for where the hell, you know, Smilo went. And Yord and Osha are still supposed to be running away from the initial fight, fight, making distance away. And they come upon the mimics again. Now, the mimics are what I'm calling these roly-poly caterpillars in the trees. They look like mimic to me because they fly. Now, this whole time... Asha and Yord have been running through this forest. They ran across Basil and then lost him again because, you know, that's the fucking beavers, man. You know, don't keep an eye on them when you stop to talk. And they have now run into this part of the, of the forest where the mimics are. And Asha tells, has to remind Yord, the Jedi Knight, to turn off his goddamn lightsaber because he's been running through the forest with the shit lit the whole time because he got a glow stick and he wants to show it off. Now, once they get to this, you know, trees of the mimics, Asha suggests that they walk slowly through here. I'm asking why? Why do you walk slowly through here? Which one are you more afraid of? The flying cockroaches in the trees or or since, you know, you see they go down pretty easy with a lightsaber. Or the smiling mask wearing dude with a red lightsaber that apparently can just materialize in front of anybody. No matter what direction you ran away from him for how long. So they're going to walk slow. Eventually... <laughs> Soul catches up to um, Smilo and they go in for round two. But this time with round two, you got Soul and Jackie working in tandem to come after him. And this is working pretty well. It is. It's working pretty well. A master and an apprentice taking on this other person. Cool. It's not Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. You can forget that. This is Wong Gong Jin and Jackie, okay? This, you can forget that shit. This is not what it is. This is not a remake of The Phantom Menace and Maul. No, this is not that fucking fight. You can forget that shit. I don't know who wrote this shit in there. I got an indication they would probably wear a cowboy hat to re try to remake this scene and get this kind of thing going. No. It was decent. It was entertaining at some points. But no. Why? For me, because f you. You ain't George Lucas. That's why. And that ain't Ray Park. Now, while the fight scene was cool, um, it goes the way you think it goes. It does. Now, one of the most objectionable parts of it is that the reason it goes the way it goes is because Smilo keeps wanting to go after. May, who keeps running away. So they keep leaving the fight to go chase after May because they want to end May. Okay. 
Now, while that's going on, Asha in the Valley of the Mimics convinces Jor to no, we got to go back and save them because you know that, that thing Smilo is going to kill kill May. Who get? <laughs> Why are we saving this person now? Yeah, it's your sister, but you know, shit happens. So while she tried to convince Short the first time to go back and he told her, no, Master Soul gave me an order and we're going to do it. And he keeps running the other direction with her. This time he decides to run backwards with her because she has an idea. She's going to pull her little fake droid off her batteries, not included droid off her hip and use her little light and usher them back to the fight. Now, by the time they get back to the fight, they get to, they show up in time to see the resolution of the Jackie Soul and Smilo um, three way duel, and they get to interject themselves into that fight, which ends in a pretty predictable way, shocking but predictable. Now, at this point, I was met with some relief and some. Uh, this is status quo because certain people in this culture, no matter how much, how liberal and progressive these people say they are, certain people in these cultures get it the worst, the most graphic, the most, you know, the way you can see it on screen. If you've ever watched my show, you know what the hell I'm talking about. And Smilo takes off after you know, May again. Now, eventually, it is revealed who Smilo is. And I'm not going to tell you because I told you, this show is more fun to watch it and not take it seriously, have a drink, and just sit there and watch it than it is to take it seriously. If you take it seriously, you'll just get pissed off. That's the reviewer's job is to get pissed off. Yours is to be entertained by how disgusted we are. <laughs> be that as it may, mask is broken and it's revealed who Smilo is. And I can say I was right. I can say I was right, but dun dun dun. That was kind of predictable. Now, beyond that, what you find out is that while Smilo wants to kill May, Smilo might want to take on Osha. Just saying. And then we have Smilo hinting at some um, little darkness in Master Soul that he ain't all on the up and up. How did I know? I don't know. I don't know. For as much as we saw a Smilo, we still know very little. Okay. Now, at a point in this, Faye is disabled. And Asha comes in to save the day and sick the mimics on Smilo and carry Smilo off camera. And I'm yelling at the screen, kill that motherfucker. What are y'all doing? What what are we do? Oh my God, this is so stupid. And then we get to have Eventually, a moment between May and Asha meet each other, hugging it out, and then fighting. Because why? Chicks. Now, the next part of this would be a spoil if I said it. So I'm not going to, but I would say. The ending of this episode for me seems stupid. Why does it seem stupid? I'll tell you this, and it's not it's not a spoil in a sense. 
because Master Soul, you know, Master Soul is a <laughs> Jedi. What comes along with that? Ask yourself that question. What comes along with being a Jedi? What's like one of the, you know, main things you kind of, you know, pick up when you a Jedi? Which means to me, the ending does not work. And that's where I leave it. It was a fight. Now, finding out Leslie Headland, this was her favorite episode. Yeah, probably because it's the one that actually has some action in it. Less dreadful dialogue and more just fighting. And you didn't have to really direct that shit. Now, to me, I see a lot of Filoni put into this. I do. Because it, these fight scenes in this are clearly put in there to emulate and remake fight scenes that have already been done by George and other shit. The Maul, Qui-Gon, and Obi-Wan fight? Definitely. Definitely. The rest of this stuff? Probably some other places. Probably more of Anakin on Mustafar taking out the um, Separatists. Probably more of that shit. Which, while I like fight scenes, I like martial arts and sword play, I do. I like a well choreographed fight scene. Make no mistake about that shit. Wherever it is. I ain't giving them points on that because there's no points for originality. You don't get the style points. So. For me, um, am I as pissed off about this episode as I was the rest of them? No. Because this episode had a little bit more action, so it put you a, a little bit more into, ooh, this could be interesting. But no, we get to get back to the same bullshit. We still got little or no questions answered. Yeah, we know who's under the mask now. Yes, it left off in a dumb place. Still don't know why the person under the mask is doing what the hell they're doing. Why? Still don't know how the person under the mask actually got trained. How? It's something I thought about that's been nagging me for this whole time is is Asha and May using the thread or is May using the force? All right? Because it's supposed to be two different things, right? They came from the Covenant Witches. So when she's using, you know, telekinetics to grab her daggers and stuff like that, is she pulling on the thread? Or is she pulling on the force? Because I would think the master would be training her to use the force and not the thread. No, no. Just a curious thing. Like when Asha in the last episode was feeling the bugs and stuff before it got killed. Is that the force or is that the thread? Because it would seem like it was the force. And if it's the force, what f is the thread? Just curious. These and many more questions will remain to be fucking answered. Um, but that's it. That's my reaction to this episode. Um, not as cringeworthy as some of the other ones. Um, it goes on. We we see fights. We see glow sticks. We see lightsabers. Woo! So what? Still a lot of questions that need to be answered in this. Still. Doesn't make any sense. Unconfirmed kills. Don't do it for me. 
Mm -mm. Too many lapses in common sense. And if somebody can explain to me how this person kept getting in front of people who had been running away from him for, I don't know, minutes of screen time at the very least, how you get in front of him to cut him off at the pass? Are you legitimately working on a really small soundstage and just running in circles? <sighs> anyway, that's it. Um, that's my reaction to episode five of the Acolyte Night. Like, share, subscribe, support the stream if you feel so inclined. I've been Artisan MC, and I will see you next time. Peace.